Pammy first came to us in the fall of 2013. We had been contacted by our local animal rescue, home again in Bancroft, Canada, whom we had become involved with. She had been found on a local dirt road wandering, alone and scared. She was taken to the local animal shelter and they contacted home again. Home again contacted us as we had experience with chihuahuas. We agreed to take her in as temporary foster. After she arrived at our home, I went inside to see the little one. She was set up in a playpen and I looked down and saw her. She looked so helpless, so pitiful, but so beautiful and innocent. The first words I spoke to her were, Hi little one! And she stopped doing what she was doing and she looked in the direction that my voice had come from. It was almost like she was asking me to pick her up. She seemed to like my voice. I looked at her and something stirred in my heart. I picked her up and started giving her love and affection. I had no idea that this was the beginning of a beautiful friendship, but I'm sure that Pammy knew. I asked home again if I could keep her, and they graciously said yes, but only if the vet cleared her and of course if no one was looking for her. No one ever claimed her. We took her to the vet the next day to get checked over. Pammy was estimated between 16 and 22 years old. She had a crooked spine from age, no teeth. She was blind but could see shadows. Her brain was deteriorating, but fortunately, she wasn't in any pain. She was cleared for us to take her. My wife and I agreed that I could keep her until she either passed away or started feeling pain. I noticed that she had a strong spirit and despite her shortcomings, she had a real zeal for life. Her strength and desire for life reminded me of my mom when she was battling cancer, so I named her after my late mother, Pam. I called her Pammy. It didn't take long for Pammy to learn her new name, whatever her former name had been. Her past was and still is a complete mystery to us. We have gone through so many scenarios of what her life might have been, we, we just don't know. However, that wasn't important because Pammy was part of her family now. With her having no teeth, I began chewing up a little bit of whatever was on my plate and giving it to her. I did this for her three times a day, every day, for as long as we had her. Pammy became a huge part of my life and I took her with me to a lot of places around her home and to town. She slept in bed with me and would always be snuggled up against my side. She would make these little grunting sounds when turning around and around in bed until she would finally plop down and nuzzle up against me. She was well liked by our other animals. Everyone sensed that she was old and frail and treated her gently and with respect. Pammy became a bit of a celebrity in our circle of friends as everyone knew who she was and they adored her. She was loved now, despite what her past had been. She was home. For over two years, Pammy was a constant for me and me for her. The bond between us became so strong that we were like a part of each other now. This may sound crazy, but I learned a lot from her. Yes, I learned from the most unexpected source. A blind, toothless, disabled, elderly chihuahua. It's nothing that I can explain because words just won't do it justice. But she helped me so much. Help that I didn't realize that I needed. I can honestly say that Pammy helped me become a better person. My wife said that she always knew when I was a couple of miles away from home because Pammy would start barking. Sure enough, a few minutes later I would pull up in the driveway. This is just amazing to me. It makes me wonder just what kind of connection we truly have with our pets that we can't see. I've come to realize that you can never tell when a life changer is just around the corner. Pammy was that for me. She gave me everything she had, every bit of love, hope and happiness. I gave it back to her. Pammy sure did love her daddy and her daddy loves her. In the middle of June 2016, Pammy took a turn for the worse. She started crying out in pain when she moved. It started out once or twice and then more and more. I held on to hope that this would pass in a day or two. But after a few days it grew worse and it was time for that heart-wrenching decision. That decision that would take Pammy away from me. 
It hit me like a ton of bricks, but I made the call to the vet to have it done. I had to. Pammy was still as loving as ever, but she was hurting. It took every bit of my strength to make that phone call to the vet, but I did it. I would take her in the next day on June 22nd. The last photos are of me saying goodbye to Pammy. Pammy didn't know what was about to happen, so she soaked up the loving like always, so innocent and trustingly. But I knew. She gently passed as I stroked her soothingly, and I asked her if she would watch for me on the other side. Then she breathed her last breath and faded away. You know, in a little over two years, I had experienced something so wonderful and beautiful. Time as it passes doesn't move fast, but when it's over, it can seem so short. Love never dies, and even though as time goes by, it gets easier, the love remains. Love is a very powerful thing. I love you, Pammy. Always and forever. Rest in peace, baby girl. And Pammy, thank you for being such a blessing to me. <laughs>